Hey folks, Techniverse here. Today we are looking at the Arachne engine for Kira. So this is the beta of the Arachne engine. It is going to be hopefully incorporated into the main branch of Kira somewhere around Kira 5.0, which will be coming up in the future months. Of course, first they have to release 4.9 and the beta for that. But there are some interesting developments with this software that I wanted to share with you and explain the difference of what the Arachne engine does versus the old Kira engine. So let's jump in and take a look right now on the Technivorous channel. Technivorous channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash technivorous. Here we are in Kira Arachne. In fact, I have two versions open. This is 4.8 and this is Arachne on the right here. You can see that because it says Arachne engine beta. And after mentioning that, I do want to mention that since the software is still in beta, they would love it if you would report any bugs that you find so that they can fix them before the full rollout of the Arachne engine. And we can take a look at what's new in the beta versus the alpha version. You get this nice blurb here that I went over in a prior video, just more asking about the bug uh, the bug hunt basically and reporting any issues that you have but in the new features we're going to notice a couple of things line width color scheme this is a new color scheme has been added that shows the line width of individual lines in layer view and static outer walls the outer wall no longer adjusts its width or position if there are any inner walls adjacent to it with the inward distributed line width strategy. Now what that is, the inward distributed line width strategy is one of the methods it uses to determine where to place these lines. And we'll go over that and some of the differences here in just a moment. But there are also a, basically a long list. There's a whole slew of bug fixes and things that they've adjusted between now and the alpha. So they fix these issues. And then there are a few other known issues. So definitely read through this known issue list. If you find a bug, and it's one of these known issues, I don't think you need to report it, but if you find anything that doesn't seem to be mentioned here, definitely submit that bug report. And there are some documentation on the alpha here. If you'd like to continue reading that, you get to that by going to preferences, or excuse me, to help and then what's new. Uh, you can also check your version by clicking help and then about, just in case like me, you have multiple versions and you wanna make sure you're working with the beta. So. One of the first things that you're going to notice as a difference when slicing with this engine is there is no longer a shell category in the beta for the Arachne version. It's now noted as walls, and it still has most of the same properties. You can see these are set up for my Artillery Genius, and that, artil that machine uses a wall thickness of about 1.32 on my standard profile. So um, if you look here, this is where it begins to vary. This is that inward distributed strategy we were talking about, the variable line strategy. This is the new option that is going to work with the Arachne engine and change a few things for you. Now, basically what it's going to do is extrude different widths depending on what is needed to fill the model more accurately. And we can show you a good preview of that using the inward distributed line strategy here because I pre-sliced this model. And this is basically just a random thing I made in Fusion 360 for this purpose. And you're gonna notice this a lot in sharp corners. So um, this really, really fine, long, thin spot here, you can see in version 4.8 has some gaps in it in the walls. I'm not getting a full three layers. It's denoting that as infill. And that's not exactly gonna be the most accurate I'm only getting one outer layer here, which means that this part's gonna be extremely weak and probably won't form properly. And that is not ideal, obviously. We want those points, if they're modeled into the model, to appear. So uh, if you look at the Arachne version using the inward distribution model, you can see that it is thinning the lines slightly and then adjusting them inward to completely fill that space with wall instead of infill. So now there are no gaps in this wall going to lead to a stronger part but it's also minimizing travel and stutter and things like that so if you look you can see the time saved in this corner is basically going to be about three minutes the difference being uh one hour 42 minutes versus one hour 39 minutes with arachne so that doesn't seem like much but keep in mind this is a very small model and there are other strategies to try so let's try uh, and you can get an explanation of, of what these are 
by hovering over it and it'll tell you what each one is and what each one does so um, let's try I have I think inward distributed was one one of my favorite let's try center deviation it'll change some of our settings here but we can now re-slice and in the meantime since we know what this model looks like with these gaps in here we can come back to that but let's zoom out and you can see that this is basically just a, a random jagged model that I made for this purpose so let's see what these lines look like now and we can compare them you can see it's still doing a slightly better job of filling these gaps and it's not filling them in with that yellow there either but it's still leaving a little bit of a gap so I think it did better with the inward distribution we'll go back to that and that's basically the main difference between the regular engine and the Arachne engine now what this means is let's take this model and make it a lot bigger and extrapolate the time and filament savings if we take a look at a larger model you'll see that not only is it squeezing filaments into places where it wasn't before but it's also rounding off some corners so if you look at this corner here and the arachne version you'll see that on the inside it is rounding that corner keeping the structural integrity but decreasing the print time slightly and all this is adding up to just under an hour of print time saved versus version 4.8 we're doing 12 hours 49 minutes with 4.8 and 11 hours 53 minutes with arachne and this is a rather substantial size model it takes up most of the build plate in reality however it would probably take a little bit longer than this because you would need some support under this mechanism here but this is basically just to show you the differences in slicing with the regular engine and the arachne engine and i think we did a pretty decent job of illustrating a few of those differences today I highly recommend you try Arachne out. It is going to become the norm in the future, and there are lots of cool things about it. They are asking that you submit any good profiles you have for machines with Arachne once tested and found to be working because that is the main area that they're lacking. I think they're pretty much ready for production other than a few profile tweaks and, of course, any additional profiles that might get added before the actual launch. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Make sure you stay tuned for the next one. And Technivorous out. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Pay no attention to the mess going on behind me. Pay more attention to the mess going on on my shirt. Check this out. Finally got the merch available. That's right. Finally hit 10K, so the merch is finally here. Make sure you check out the teespring merchandise bar below the video and thanks for watching don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe because we have more videos coming your way in fact i've thrown a couple of suggestions videos for you to watch on the screen right now so go ahead and check those out when you get done don't forget to pop over and check out the merchandise there's plenty of stuff to see and thanks for watching guys